Raquel Haynes first learned to draw during a hospital stay. Now in her home, it's her therapy. It takes my mind off my page. When she was two, Haynes was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia, a genetic blood disorder that deprives the body's nerves and organs of oxygen. The 36-year-old lives in near constant pain. It feels like the pain is so much and so heavy that I'm pinned down to my bed. For many years, Haynes was prescribed 585 milligrams of an opioid daily, the equivalent of 130 Tylenol-3 pills. But that's now changed. This guy saves my life most of the times. For chronic pain sufferers like Haynes, opioids are a lifesaver. But access to the pain medication is getting harder because of doctors' concerns over addiction and abuse. I have had patients refer to us because uh, their doctors cut them from the opioids. And that's ridiculous because they were not addicted. Opioid prescriptions dropped in some parts of the country last year, a likely outcome of updated guidelines two years ago that instructed doctors to put the prescription pad down and wean their patients off opioids. But the solution for chronic pain sufferers isn't always that simple. The pendulum has just swung too far. This pain researcher says the guidelines created a chilling effect among doctors who became uncomfortable prescribing opioids to their patients. The biggest issue is massive ignorance and misinformation about pain management, what's appropriate, what is the appropriate role for opioids. In your experience, what are the main barriers for opioid tapering and in Toronto, Ferlin educates doctors across Ontario about chronic pain and the role of opioids in treatment. If you try to taper, go slow. She also suggests exercise and physiotherapy. Even diet and sleep can have an impact on chronic pain. It gives me the chance to just focus on the canvas. Raquel Haynes's doctors have tapered her down to around 150 milligrams a day. It's managing the chronic pain and helping her regain a near normal life. Cass Rusi, CBC News, Brampton, Ontario.